Welcome to Celestial Chronicles, where we explore the mysteries of ancient artifacts, myths, and legends that have captivated human imagination for centuries. In today's episode, we delve into one of the most enigmatic and fascinating relics from the biblical era, the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, often depicted as a divine artifact of immense power, has been the subject of countless myths and theories. It's said to have the ability to decimate entire armies, kill anyone who touched it without permission, and most intriguingly, allow communication with God. But what if the Ark wasn't just a religious symbol? What if it was a sophisticated piece of technology, capable of emitting radiation and electrical discharges? Join us as we unravel the origins, history, and mysteries surrounding this extraordinary relic. And don't forget to subscribe to Celestial Chronicles for more deep dives into ancient mysteries and technological wonders. The Ark's Divine Reputation The Ark of the Covenant is revered as a powerful divine artifact. It is said to have the ability to destroy armies and kill those who touched it improperly. More significantly, it was believed to enable communication with God. Imagine the awe and fear this would have inspired among ancient peoples. Could such tales be exaggerations, or is there a kernel of truth that hints at something far more advanced than mere superstition? The Ark's Biblical Origins According to the biblical texts, particularly in the Book of Exodus, the Ark of the Covenant was constructed under the direct orders of God, who provided Moses with explicit and detailed instructions. These instructions were not only meticulous but also imbued with deep symbolic and practical significance. The Ark was to house the stone tablets inscribed with the Ten Commandments, which were the fundamental laws given to the Israelites. The instructions for the construction of the Ark are found in Exodus 25 verses 10 to 22. God commanded that the Ark be made of acacia wood, a durable and resilient material known for its resistance to decay. The Ark's dimensions were specified as 2.5 cubits long, 1.5 cubits wide, and 1.5 cubits high, which translates roughly to 45 inches long, 27 inches wide, and 27 inches high. This precision in dimensions indicates that the Ark was not just a simple chest but a carefully crafted artifact designed to exact specifications. The Ark was to be overlaid with pure gold, both inside and out. This use of gold not only signified purity and divinity but also had practical implications. Gold is an excellent conductor of electricity, which might hint at a functional aspect beyond its religious symbolism. The lid of the Ark, known as the Mercy Seat, was to be made of pure gold and featured two cherubim with their wings spread out and facing each other. The cherubim's wings would meet above the Mercy Seat, creating a space that was considered the throne of God on earth. Additionally, the Ark was to be equipped with four gold rings, one at each corner, through which two poles made of acacia wood, also overlaid with gold, would be inserted. These poles were used to carry the Ark and were never to be removed. This ensured that the Ark could be transported without being touched directly, which was a critical safety measure given the deadly consequences associated with improper handling. The Ark was placed in the innermost chamber of the tabernacle, known as the Holy of Holies, which was only accessible to the High Priest once a year on the Day of Atonement. This restricted access further emphasized the sanctity and danger associated with the Ark. But why would a supreme deity need such a specific design for what appears to be a mere chest? The detailed instructions provided by God might suggest that the Ark was more than just a box to hold sacred tablets. The precise materials, dimensions, and design elements point to the possibility that the Ark had a functional purpose beyond its religious symbolism. Some theories propose that the Ark could have been a form of ancient technology, potentially an electrical device or even a source of energy. The meticulous construction, with its emphasis on specific materials like gold and acacia wood, and the strict guidelines for handling the Ark, imply that it could have had properties or functions that required such care and precision. The gold overlay, for example, could have been essential for conducting electrical energy, while the dimensions and design might have been crucial for its potential technological functions. In essence, the Ark's construction according to God's blueprints was an intricate process that combined symbolic, religious significance with potential practical functions. This duality invites us to explore the possibility that the Ark was not just a religious artifact but perhaps a sophisticated piece of technology, the true nature of which remains one of history's most intriguing mysteries. The Ark's Construction the Ark of the Covenant, as described in the Bible, was an extraordinary piece of craftsmanship built according to divine specifications. The construction of the Ark was not a simple task but rather a meticulous process that required adherence to precise dimensions, materials, and decorative elements. 
the Ark was constructed from acacia wood, a material known for its durability and resistance to decay. Acacia wood, being dense and hard, was ideal for creating a long-lasting artifact. The dimensions of the Ark were specified as 2.5 cubits in length, 1.5 cubits in width, and 1.5 cubits in height. In modern measurements, this translates to approximately 1.1 meters, 45 inches, long, 0.7 meters, 27 inches, wide, and 0.7 meters, 27 inches, high. These dimensions were not arbitrary but carefully designed to create a proportionate and balanced structure. The entire arc, both inside and out, was overlaid with pure gold. Gold, being a precious metal, signified purity, holiness, and divine presence. However, its use was not merely symbolic. Gold is an excellent conductor of electricity, which raises intriguing questions about the possible functional aspects of the Arkansas. Could the extensive use of gold in the Ark's construction have served a purpose beyond mere decoration? The possibility that the Ark was designed to conduct or store electrical energy is a theory that continues to fascinate researchers and enthusiasts alike. The lid of the Ark, known as the Mercy Seat, was also made of pure gold. The Mercy Seat featured two cherubim, angelic figures with wings outspread, facing each other. The wings of the cherubim met above the Mercy Seat, forming a space considered to be the earthly throne of God. This space between the cherubim was where God was believed to manifest his presence and communicate with Moses and the high priests. The intricate design of the cherubim, with their detailed features and precise placement, suggests that they might have served a functional role, perhaps as part of a mechanism or a symbolic representation of divine power. Additionally, the Ark had four gold rings attached to its four corners. These rings were designed to hold two poles made of acacia wood, also overlaid with gold. The poles were inserted through the rings to allow the Ark to be carried without being touched directly. This method of transportation was crucial, as touching the Ark improperly was believed to result in instant death. The use of poles ensured that the Ark could be moved safely, emphasizing the importance of following divine instructions precisely. Only the Levites, a priestly class descended from Levi, one of the twelve sons of Jacob, were permitted to carry the Arkansas. The Levites were chosen for their purity and their role as spiritual leaders among the Israelites. Their exclusive right to transport the Ark underscored the sanctity and danger associated with it. The detailed procedures for handling and transporting the Ark reflect the belief that it was not just a sacred object but one imbued with immense power. The meticulous details involved in the construction of the Ark suggest that it was more than just a religious artifact. The specific choice of materials, precise dimensions, and intricate design elements point to a technological object designed with precision. The use of gold, in particular, raises the possibility that the Ark had functional purposes related to conducting electricity or other forms of energy. Could the Ark have been an ancient device capable of harnessing and storing energy? Theories abound about its potential technological aspects. Some researchers speculate that the Ark could have acted as a capacitor, a device used to store electrical energy. The combination of gold and wood, along with the detailed construction, supports the idea that the Ark was designed with advanced knowledge of materials and their properties. The notion that the Ark was a sophisticated technological device challenges our understanding of ancient civilizations and their capabilities. It opens up possibilities that our ancestors had access to advanced knowledge that has since been lost or forgotten. Whether the Ark was a divine artifact, a technological marvel, or a combination of both, its construction remains a testament to the ingenuity and craftsmanship of the people who built it. In conclusion, the Ark of the Covenant's construction is a fascinating blend of religious symbolism and potential technological functionality. Its precise dimensions, use of gold, and detailed design suggest that it was far more than a simple chest. The Ark remains an enduring mystery, inviting us to explore the intersection of faith, history, and technology in ancient times. The Ark's protective nature. Throughout its history, the Ark was treated with extreme caution. Numerous fatal incidents are associated with it, hinting at properties that go beyond the spiritual. For instance, the Bible recounts how touching the Ark led to sudden death. Some theorists suggest that these fatalities could be explained by radiation poisoning. When the Israelites transported the Ark, it was always covered and handled with utmost care. The Levites were required to cover the Ark with a cloth and a layer of animal skin before it could be moved. Those who violated these procedures often met with sudden, unexplained deaths. The Ark as a technological device. Could it be that the Ark of the Covenant was more than a religious artifact? 
might it have been a sophisticated technological device? This intriguing possibility invites us to explore what kind of technology ancient peoples could have accessed. The idea that the Ark could produce electrical discharges offers a compelling explanation for the deadly consequences of improper handling. Moreover, biblical descriptions of the Ark emitting light and sound suggest the presence of advanced technology that far surpasses our current understanding of the biblical era. To fully appreciate this theory, consider the materials and construction of the Arkansas. The extensive use of gold, known for its excellent conductive properties, suggests a deliberate design choice. Gold's conductivity would make it an ideal material for a device intended to generate or store electrical energy. Additionally, the detailed and specific instructions for building and handling the arc hint at a deeper purpose, one that required exacting adherence to ensure both its functionality and safety. Descriptions from biblical texts often portray the ark as emitting a radiant light, especially when God's presence was near. This light might not have been merely symbolic. In the realm of modern technology, light emission is frequently associated with energy discharge or electrical phenomena. If the arc could indeed produce light, this could indicate the presence of an internal energy source, perhaps similar to a modern capacitor or battery. Furthermore, there are accounts of the arc producing sounds, such as a low hum or a more pronounced noise during significant events. In modern terms, these sounds could be compared to those generated by high-voltage electrical devices. The hum of electricity passing through a conductor, or the sound of electrical discharges, would have been awe-inspiring, and terrifying, to ancient peoples. Such phenomena might explain why the Ark was kept in the Holy of Holies, only accessible to the high priests who would have been trained in the rituals and safety measures required to approach it. The design of the Ark, particularly the cherubim on the mercy seat, might also play into this theory. The cherubim, with their wings spread out towards each other, could have served as a part of a system for generating or storing energy. In electrical terms, their placement could be seen as a configuration similar to modern antennas or electrodes, facilitating the flow or focus of electrical energy. When the Israelites carried the ark, they used poles inserted through rings on its sides, never touching the ark directly. This strict handling procedure parallels modern safety protocols for transporting electrical equipment, which must be insulated and handled with care to prevent accidental discharge. The fatal incidents associated with touching the ark could thus be seen as electrical accidents. For example, the death of Uzzah, who tried to steady the ark and was struck down, might be explained by an unintended electrical shock. Looking at the broader context, consider the parallels with other ancient technologies. There are numerous accounts and artifacts from ancient civilizations that hint at advanced knowledge of engineering and energy. The ancient Egyptians, for example, are believed to have had some understanding of electrical phenomena, as evidenced by the so-called Baghdad battery, an artifact thought to be capable of generating an electrical charge. If ancient cultures possessed such knowledge, it's not inconceivable that the Israelites, guided by divine instructions, could have constructed a device as sophisticated as the Ark. Theories about the Ark being a technological device also delve into its potential purposes beyond storing the Ten Commandments. Some researchers speculate that the Ark could have been used as a communication device, perhaps even a radio transmitter. This aligns with biblical accounts of God speaking to Moses from between the cherubim. If the Ark could generate or harness energy, it might have been capable of transmitting signals, much like early radio technology. Another possibility is that the Ark functioned as a weapon. The Bible recounts several instances where the Ark led the Israelites to victory in battle, often through seemingly miraculous means. If the Ark could produce electrical discharges, it could have been used to incapacitate enemies, akin to a primitive form of a taser or an EMP electromagnetic pulse, device. While these theories remain speculative, they open up fascinating avenues for understanding the intersection of faith, history, and technology. The idea that the Ark of the Covenant was a technological device challenges conventional interpretations and invites us to reconsider the capabilities of ancient civilizations. It suggests that our ancestors might have possessed knowledge and skills that have since been lost or overlooked. In conclusion, the Ark of the Covenant as a technological device is a theory that bridges the gap between ancient religious texts and modern scientific inquiry. Its construction, materials, and the phenomena associated with it point to a potential understanding of electrical energy and engineering far ahead of its time. Whether viewed as a divine artifact or a piece of advanced technology, the Ark continues to captivate and inspire, prompting us to explore the mysteries of our past with renewed curiosity and an open mind. 
fatal incidents and radioactive properties. One of the most compelling arguments for the advanced and potentially dangerous nature of the Ark of the Covenant comes from the numerous stories of fatal incidents associated with it. These accounts, which are often described as divine punishments in the Bible, may also be interpreted through a modern lens as incidents involving electrical shocks or radiation exposure. A well-known incident involves Uzzah, who was struck dead instantly after touching the Arkansas. The event occurred while the Ark was being transported on an ox cart, and when the oxen stumbled, Uzzah reached out to steady the Arkansas. According to the biblical narrative, this act of touching the sacred artifact resulted in his immediate death. Traditionally, this has been viewed as a divine retribution for his irreverence. However, from a technological perspective, Uzzah's death could be seen as the result of a high-voltage electrical shock. The Ark, potentially acting as a powerful capacitor, might have stored electrical energy that discharged through Uzzah when he made contact, leading to his sudden demise. Another significant incident occurred when the Philistines captured the Ark and placed it in the temple of their god Dagon. The next day, the statue of Dagon was found toppled, and the Philistines themselves were afflicted with severe ailments, including tumors and plagues. The biblical text describes these afflictions as acts of divine retribution. Yet, the symptoms described, such as tumors and widespread illness, could be consistent with radiation sickness. Radiation exposure can cause acute health effects, including severe skin burns, tumors, and a variety of other maladies that align with the accounts of the Philistine suffering. The idea that the Ark could emit radiation is further supported by its construction materials and the handling protocols described in the Bible. Gold, which was used extensively in the Ark's construction, is not only a good conductor of electricity but also an effective shield against radiation. If the Ark contained or generated radioactive materials, the gold overlay would help contain these emissions. However, any direct contact or prolonged exposure, especially without the protective measures that modern technology provides, could result in harmful radiation exposure. The Philistines' experience with the Ark didn't stop at the Temple of Dagon. The Ark was moved to several Philistine cities, and each city experienced outbreaks of tumors and illness, leading the Philistines to believe that the Ark was a dangerous and cursed object. Eventually, they decided to return it to the Israelites, hoping to rid themselves of the afflictions. They placed the Ark on a new cart pulled by two cows, along with a guilt offering of golden tumors and rats, which symbolized the plagues they had suffered. The cows headed straight for the Israelite territory, indicating to the Philistines that their suffering was indeed linked to the Ark. These narratives suggest that the Ark had properties or capabilities that could cause severe physical harm, akin to the effects of radiation. The detailed instructions for handling the Ark, such as using poles to carry it and restricting access to specific, purified individuals, could be seen as ancient safety protocols designed to prevent accidental exposure to its dangerous energies. The Levites, who were charged with transporting the Ark, might have been trained in these safety measures, much like modern technicians who handle hazardous materials. The association of the Ark with light and sound also hints at its potential radioactive or electrical properties. Accounts of the Ark emitting a bright light could be explained by Cherenkov radiation, a blue glow that occurs when charged particles move through a medium faster than the speed of light in that medium. This phenomenon is often observed in nuclear reactors. Similarly, the sounds associated with the arc might be related to electrical discharges or the mechanical operation of some internal device, further supporting the theory of its technological nature. The idea that the arc could have radioactive properties also aligns with modern theories about ancient knowledge of natural sciences. Some researchers propose that ancient civilizations, including the Israelites, might have had access to knowledge about natural radioactive materials and their effects. If the Ark incorporated such materials, it would explain both the deadly consequences of improper handling and the strict guidelines for its construction and transportation. In summary, the fatal incidents associated with the Ark of the Covenant, traditionally seen as divine punishments, may also be interpreted as evidence of its advanced and potentially hazardous nature. Whether through electrical shocks or radiation exposure, these events suggest that the Ark possessed properties and capabilities that were both powerful and dangerous. This duality of the Ark, as a divine artifact and a sophisticated technological device, continues to captivate and challenge our understanding of ancient history and technology. The Ark's Disappearance The disappearance of the Ark of the Covenant is one of the most enduring and tantalizing mysteries in history. After the Babylonian conquest of Jerusalem in 586 BCE, the Ark vanished from the historical record. 
Its absence has fueled centuries of speculation, scholarly debate, and adventurous quests, as people from all walks of life have tried to uncover its final resting place. The Babylonian conquest was a tumultuous period for the Israelites. The Babylonian forces, led by King Nebuchadnezzar II, sacked Jerusalem, destroyed the first temple, and took many Israelites into exile. Amid the chaos and destruction, the Ark, which had been kept in the Holy of Holies, the innermost sanctum of the temple, disappeared. Whether it was destroyed, hidden, or taken away remains a subject of intense debate. One prevalent theory suggests that the Ark was hidden by the Israelites to protect it from the invading Babylonians. According to this theory, the priests or other guardians of the Ark could have secreted it away to prevent it from being captured or desecrated. This idea is supported by the fact that other sacred items and treasures were known to have been hidden during times of crisis. The hiding place would have been known only to a select few, ensuring the Ark's safety and secrecy. Another fascinating theory posits that the Ark was taken far beyond Israel, possibly to Ethiopia. This theory is largely supported by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, which claims to possess the Ark in a church in Aksum, Ethiopia. According to Ethiopian tradition, the Ark was brought to Ethiopia by Menelik I, the son of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, and has been guarded there ever since. The church at Aksum is said to have a specially designated guardian monk, the only person allowed to see the Arkansas. This monk dedicates his life to watching over the sacred artifact, ensuring its protection and secrecy. Despite the church's claims, no independent verification has been possible, as the Ark remains shrouded in mystery and seclusion. In addition to the Ethiopian claim, there are numerous theories suggesting that the Ark was hidden within or beneath Jerusalem itself. Some researchers believe that the Ark could be concealed in a secret chamber beneath the Temple Mount, where the first temple once stood. The Temple Mount has been a site of significant archaeological and religious interest, but extensive excavations are highly restricted due to the religious sensitivities and political complexities surrounding the site. This has left many potential hiding places unexplored and the mystery unresolved. Other less conventional theories propose that the Ark was taken to locations as varied as Ireland, where it is believed to be buried under the Hill of Terra, or even hidden away by the Knights Templar during the Crusades. The Templars were rumored to have discovered the Ark during their time in Jerusalem and to have transported it to a secret location in Europe. These theories, while fascinating, are largely speculative and lack substantial historical evidence. Despite numerous expeditions, extensive research, and the enduring fascination with the Ark's fate, its final resting place remains one of history's greatest unsolved mysteries. Various adventurers and archaeologists have dedicated their lives to finding the Ark, often inspired by the biblical accounts and tantalizing clues scattered through history. These quests have led to numerous discoveries about ancient cultures and their religious practices, but the Ark itself remains elusive. The mystery of the Ark's disappearance continues to captivate the imagination. It embodies the intersection of history, religion, and legend, each theory about its fate adding to its mystique. Whether hidden in a remote monastery, buried beneath sacred ground, or spirited away to an unknown location, the Ark of the Covenant's ultimate fate remains one of the most intriguing enigmas of our past. As we consider these various possibilities, we are reminded of the profound significance the Ark held for the ancient Israelites and continues to hold for many people today. Its disappearance leaves us with more questions than answers, inviting us to explore the depths of history and faith in search of this legendary artifact. The quest for the Ark, whether literal or metaphorical, is a journey into the heart of one of humanity's greatest stories, a story that continues to inspire wonder and curiosity. The Ark in Communication with God one of the most fascinating and enigmatic aspects of the Ark of the Covenant is its purported ability to facilitate direct communication with God. According to biblical accounts, Moses and the high priests would receive divine messages from the space between the cherubim on the Ark's lid, known as the mercy seat. This sacred space was considered the earthly throne of God, where his presence would manifest. The rituals and preparations undertaken by the priests before approaching the Ark suggest that this was not just a religious practice, but possibly a protective measure against the Ark's powerful energy. In the Bible, it is described how God would speak to Moses, from between the two cherubim, Numbers 7 hours 89 minutes. This form of communication was direct and clear, providing Moses with guidance and commandments. The high priests, particularly the high priest on the Day of Atonement, would enter the Holy of Holies, the innermost chamber of the temple where the Ark was kept, to perform rituals and receive divine instructions. 
These interactions suggest that the Ark served as a conduit for divine communication. From a technological perspective, this phenomenon can be interpreted as a form of ancient communication device. Some researchers propose that the Ark might have functioned similarly to a radio transmitter, capable of receiving and possibly transmitting messages. This theory posits that the intricate design and specific materials used in the Ark's construction could have enabled it to interact with electromagnetic fields or other forms of energy. The gold overlay, acacia wood, and the configuration of the cherubim might have worked together to create a device capable of harnessing and focusing energy. The specific rituals and preparations undertaken by the priests before approaching the Ark further support this technological interpretation. The priests had to undergo extensive purification processes, including ceremonial washing, wearing special garments, and making sacrifices. These rituals can be seen as protective measures, akin to modern protocols for handling sensitive or dangerous equipment. The high priest would also burn incense, creating a cloud of smoke that filled the Holy of Holies. This might have served as an additional protective measure, possibly to shield the high priest from harmful radiation or electrical discharges. Moreover, the biblical descriptions of the Ark emitting light and sound add another layer to the theory of it being a communication device. The light could be seen as a visual signal or a byproduct of energy transmission, while the sounds might represent auditory signals or even the mechanical operations of the Ark itself. Such phenomena are reminiscent of the ways in which modern electronic devices emit light and sound during operation. The idea of the Ark functioning as a communication device also aligns with other ancient technologies and knowledge. For instance, the concept of using materials and geometric configurations to harness natural energies is seen in various ancient cultures. The pyramids of Egypt, with their precise alignments and construction, have been theorized to serve purposes beyond mere tombs, potentially harnessing or channeling energy. Similarly, ancient stone circles and temples around the world often exhibit knowledge of acoustics, magnetism, and other natural phenomena that could have been used for communication or ritual purposes. The potential for the Ark to transmit and receive messages also opens up intriguing possibilities about its role in the broader context of ancient Israelite society. If the Ark did function as a communication device, it would have served as a direct link between the divine and the earthly realm, reinforcing the authority and sacred role of the priests who could access it. This would have profound implications for the social and religious structures of the time, centralizing power and spiritual guidance around those who could interpret and relay the messages received from the Ark. Furthermore, the notion of the Ark as a technological device capable of communication invites us to reconsider the nature of ancient knowledge and innovation. It suggests that the ancients might have had access to advanced understanding of natural forces and materials, knowledge that has been lost or obscured over time. This perspective challenges the conventional view of history and technology, prompting us to explore the potential intersections of myth, religion, and science in ancient times. In summary, the Ark of the Covenant's ability to facilitate communication with God is not only a cornerstone of its religious significance but also a potential indication of its technological capabilities. The rituals and preparations of the priests, the emission of light and sound, and the parallels with other ancient technologies all point towards a sophisticated understanding of energy and communication. Whether viewed as a divine instrument or an ancient technological marvel, the Ark continues to captivate our imagination, inviting us to delve deeper into the mysteries of our past. Speculation and Theories Over the centuries, the true nature of the Ark of the Covenant has been the subject of endless speculation and numerous theories. Its mysterious properties and the dramatic stories associated with it have prompted scholars, theologians, and enthusiasts to explore a wide range of possibilities, each adding to the enigma of this ancient artifact. One prominent theory suggests that the Ark was an early form of capacitor, a device capable of storing and discharging electrical energy. The construction materials specified for the Ark, acacia wood overlaid with gold, are significant in this context. Gold is an excellent conductor of electricity, and wood, especially a type like acacia, can act as a dielectric, an insulating material. This combination of materials is similar to those used in modern capacitors, where two conductive plates are separated by an insulating layer. The idea here is that the arc could store electrical charges and release them under certain conditions, explaining the fatal shocks described in biblical accounts when individuals touched the arc improperly. Another compelling theory posits that the Ark contained a radioactive element, which could explain the severe health effects experienced by those who mishandled it. Radiation sickness, 
characterized by symptoms such as tumors, plagues, and sudden death, aligns closely with the afflictions suffered by the Philistines when they captured the Arkansas. The gold lining of the Ark might have served as a shield, containing the radiation but still allowing harmful exposure if the Ark was approached without the necessary precautions. This theory gains further traction when considering ancient knowledge of natural radioactive materials. Some researchers propose that the ancient Israelites, possibly influenced by earlier civilizations such as the Egyptians or Mesopotamians, might have discovered and utilized such materials. The Ark could have contained a naturally occurring radioactive substance like uranium or thorium, or even an artifact from a more advanced, possibly lost, civilization. This would explain both the need for strict handling protocols and the lethal consequences of direct contact. Expanding on the idea of advanced technology, some speculate that the Ark was a relic of a highly developed, possibly lost, civilization. This theory is often linked to the concept of ancient astronauts, suggesting that extraterrestrial beings visited Earth in antiquity and left behind advanced technological devices. The Ark, in this scenario, could be one such device, an artifact of superior technology that the Israelites inherited and venerated without fully understanding its capabilities. The descriptions of the Ark emitting light, producing sound, and facilitating communication with God might be interpreted as evidence of sophisticated technology. For example, the light could be a form of energy emission, similar to the glow produced by certain radioactive materials or electrical devices. The sounds could be mechanical noises or audio signals from an internal device. The ability to communicate with God from between the cherubim on the mercy seat could be seen as an early form of wireless communication, possibly using electromagnetic waves or another unknown technology. These theories invite us to reconsider the historical and cultural context of the Arkansas was it purely a divine artifact, revered solely for its religious significance, or was it also a piece of advanced technology that ancient people struggled to understand? The dual nature of the Ark, as a sacred object and a technological device, challenges our conventional views of history and technology. Moreover, the rituals and preparations associated with the Ark's use might have served dual purposes, both spiritual and practical. The purification rituals, special garments, and sacrificial offerings could be seen as ancient safety protocols designed to protect the priests from the Ark's powerful energies. The detailed instructions for its construction and handling might reflect a sophisticated understanding of its technological properties, disguised within the religious framework of the time. The persistent mystery surrounding the Ark's disappearance only adds to its allure. If the Ark was indeed a powerful technological device, its loss represents a significant gap in our understanding of ancient knowledge and capabilities. Theories about its current location, whether hidden in Ethiopia, buried beneath the Temple Mount, or spirited away by secretive groups like the Knights Templar, continue to fuel explorations and hypotheses. Ultimately, the speculation and theories about the Ark of the Covenant highlight our enduring fascination with the intersection of the divine and the technological. The questions raised by the Ark, about its true nature, its origins, and its purpose, reflect deeper inquiries into the nature of ancient wisdom and the possibilities of lost technologies. Was the Ark a tool of immense power and technology, misunderstood by the people of its time? Was it a divine artifact, or a relic of advanced science? These questions continue to captivate researchers and enthusiasts alike, keeping the legend of the Ark alive in our collective imagination. The quest for answers about the Ark of the Covenant remains a testament to humanity's unending curiosity and the desire to uncover the secrets of our past. As we continue to explore and speculate, the Ark serves as a powerful symbol of the mysteries that still lie hidden in the annals of history. Ongoing searches and modern expeditions. Despite its mysterious disappearance over two millennia ago, the quest for the Ark of the Covenant continues with unabated fervor. Modern explorers, archaeologists, and even religious scholars have embarked on numerous expeditions, each driven by the hope of uncovering this legendary artifact. Drawing on a combination of ancient texts, religious traditions, and modern technology, these quests span the globe, from Ethiopia to Israel to even Japan, each site holding its own unique claims and pieces of evidence. The fascination with the Ark is not merely a pursuit of historical or religious significance, it is also a search for understanding one of the greatest enigmas of the ancient world. Each expedition brings its own story, its own set of clues, and occasionally, its own controversies. Expeditions in Ethiopia One of the most persistent claims about the Ark's current location is in Ethiopia. According to Ethiopian tradition, 
The ark was brought to Ethiopia by Menelik I, the son of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. It is said to be housed in the Church of Our Lady Mary of Zion in Aksum. This claim is taken very seriously by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, which maintains that the ark has been guarded there for centuries. The church allows only a single guardian monk, known as the keeper of the ark, to see the sacred artifact. This monk is chosen for life and dedicates himself to the protection of the ark, living in isolation and prayer. The strict restriction of access to the ark has led to much speculation and skepticism from the outside world. Despite numerous requests for verification, no independent researcher or scientist has been allowed to examine the ark, leaving its presence in Aksum unconfirmed. In the 20th and 21st centuries, several expeditions have attempted to gain access to the church and verify its claims. Researchers have studied the traditions and oral histories of the region, interviewed the clergy, and even sought political support to gain access. Yet, the church's steadfast refusal to allow any form of scientific examination continues to shroud the claim in mystery. The Temple Mount in Jerusalem Another significant focus of Ark searches is the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. The Temple Mount is historically significant as the site of the first temple, where the Ark was originally housed in the Holy of Holies. Given its central role in the Ark's history, many believe that the Ark could be hidden within a secret chamber beneath the Temple Mount. In the 1980s, Ron Wyatt, a well-known but controversial explorer, claimed to have discovered the Ark in a cave system beneath the Temple Mount. Wyatt's findings included descriptions of ancient tunnels and chambers that he believed were used to hide the Ark before the Babylonian conquest. He reported seeing the Ark but did not provide verifiable evidence. His claims have been met with skepticism from the archaeological community due to the lack of concrete proof and the extraordinary nature of his assertions. The political and religious sensitivities surrounding the Temple Mount make extensive archaeological exploration difficult. The area is one of the most contentious religious sites in the world, sacred to Jews, Christians, and Muslims. As a result, any excavation efforts are heavily restricted, monitored, and often subject to intense scrutiny and opposition from various groups. Other Theories and Locations Beyond Ethiopia and Israel, there are other, less conventional theories about the Ark's location. Some suggest the Ark was taken to Egypt and hidden among the temples and tombs. Others propose that it traveled even further afield, with claims of its presence in places like Ireland, Southern Africa, and even Japan. In Ireland, some believe that the Ark is buried beneath the Hill of Terra, an ancient royal site of great significance. This theory is rooted in a mix of historical accounts and local legends that suggest a connection between the Israelites and the ancient Irish people. Several expeditions have been conducted, but no definitive evidence has been found. In Japan, a more unconventional theory suggests that the Ark was brought to Mount Tsuruji, a sacred mountain on Shikoku Island. This idea is based on a blend of local folklore and speculative historical connections between ancient Israel and Japan. As with other locations, searches have been conducted, but the Ark has remained elusive. The Role of Modern Technology Modern technology has significantly impacted the search for the Arkansas techniques such as ground-penetrating radar, remote sensing, and advanced imaging technologies have enabled researchers to explore areas that were previously inaccessible or too dangerous to excavate. These technologies provide new ways to investigate potential sites without causing damage or disturbance to culturally and religiously significant locations. Digital mapping and 3D modeling have also revolutionized the way archaeologists approach the search. By creating detailed maps and models of historical sites, researchers can plan more effective and targeted excavation strategies. These advancements increase the chances of discovering hidden chambers or artifacts without extensive and invasive digging. The Unending Quest Despite the lack of definitive evidence, the search for the Ark of the Covenant continues to inspire adventurers, scholars, and believers. Each expedition, regardless of its outcome, contributes to our understanding of ancient cultures, religious traditions, and the enduring human fascination with the divine and the mysterious. The Ark, whether it is found or remains lost, serves as a powerful symbol of the intersection between faith, history, and the quest for knowledge. The Ark's allure lies not only in its religious significance but also in the tantalizing possibility that it represents a bridge between the known and the unknown, the ancient and the advanced. As long as the mystery remains unsolved, the search for the Ark will continue, driven by the hope that one day, this legendary artifact will be found, revealing its secrets and transforming our understanding of history. Cultural Impact and Legacy
The Ark of the Covenant has left an indelible mark on popular culture, inspiring countless works of fiction, films, and books. From the iconic depiction in Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark to references in novels and television shows, the Ark continues to fascinate and inspire. But beyond its cultural impact, the Ark represents a profound mystery that bridges the gap between faith, history, and science. It challenges us to reconsider our understanding of ancient technology and the potential for lost knowledge from past civilizations. Conclusion As we conclude our exploration of the Ark of the Covenant, we invite you to reflect on the mysteries and theories we've discussed. What do you think the Ark truly was? A divine artifact, a piece of advanced technology, or something else entirely? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and let's continue this fascinating conversation. Don't forget to subscribe to Celestial Chronicles for more intriguing explorations of ancient mysteries and technological marvels. Hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest episodes. Until next time, keep looking to the stars and wondering about the secrets of the past.